The fantasy news must flow. Not if I have anything to say about it, Boblin. Let's go. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a medium thick episode of fantasy news to get through. We're going to go ahead and kick it off with some rather concerning news around George R.R. R. Martin. Unfortunately, in a video uploaded to YouTube, Martin has announced that he has come down with COVID-19 after his recent appearance at Comic-Con. In Los Angeles yesterday, I woke up and tested positive for COVID. I was as startled as any of you because I did not really think I had any uh, symptoms. All writing stuff and release dates aside, I think I speak for the entire Goblin Horde when I say I hope George R. R. Martin has a very swift and smooth recovery. Obviously, he is receiving top-of-the-line care, but this still acts as a firm reminder for all of us when going to an event like Comic-Con, there is still a pandemic happening, so taking safety precautions is a must. So Martin, we're all hoping you get well soon. But we're gonna go ahead and transition into some more hardcore fantasy news from our friends up north in Canada, the low Canadians. Steven Erickson has posted a rather large sneak peek and update in regards to the next Miles and book, and I won't get too much into it for spoiler reasons here, but if you're even a slight Miles and fan, I recommend you go ahead and check this one out. It's linked down below, as well as every other story we talk about here today. Blah, 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 like button, YouTube -y things. I recently spoke on this on Twitter though, but I just want to again reiterate, it's truly incredible to see an author like Erickson and Essel Mount just be so devoted to crafting this world so thoroughly. Malazan is a gift to fantasy fans. But in a gift to sci-fi fans, we also had Neil Stevenson tweeting out that there will be a 30th anniversary edition of Snow Crash released November 22nd of 2022. And it looks Ooh, nice. I really enjoy the kind of neon looking cover that actually seems to be shimmering, glowing with the light. Oh, that is a good choice. And the symbolism on it is oh so snow crash. So if you're a fan of Neil Stevenson's work, this might be one you want to pre-order. But speaking of books you want to keep your eye out for, I know there are still quite a few of you who are trying to get the full Cosmere and Leatherbound collection done. And I'm happy to let you know that as of August 1st, it seems that Warbreaker and The Way of Kings will be back in stock. Though these tend to go quick, no matter how much they prep for a massive surge, it seems to be larger than they're prepared for, so I would be ready to go pretty quick if you're still wanting to get these. Next news. And in a very natural, smooth step from Cosmere to Wheel of Time, it has been confirmed that Rosamund Pike, the Oscar-nominated actress, will be continuing her narration of the series and be bringing us not only The Great Hunt in 2022, but The Dragon Reborn in 2023. Now, while The Great Hunt is just around the corner, going to be released August 2nd of this year. The Dragon Reborn, we do not have a release date beyond just knowing it will be in 2023. Well, I personally have an extremely strong affinity for Michael Kramer and Kate Redding's voices for this series, and they will always be my preferred addition. I do give mad respect for Rosamund Pike for doing this. I've narrated an audio book before. It is not easy, and I did enjoy her performance. And it's cool for Wheel of Time fans to get a different interpretation of the narration for the series. Though, if you're going to be picking up the series for the first time, I recommend then you go with the OG, that's just from me. But in the last piece of Wheel of Time news we'll be covering here today, it has been announced that we're also going to be getting essentially a season two, not of the live action show that needs to do some work in terms of cranking up the quality, but of the animated shorts, which are coasting just fine at being exquisite. A surprising number of fans apparently didn't see these, and I highly recommend you hunt them down. They're essentially lore deep dives provided by Amazon Prime that in an animated interpretation of the series, show some of the key pieces of mythos that the show hasn't quite gotten to or isn't able to fit into its runtime. I might actually be more excited for this than season two. Genuinely. And in, again, I gotta respect it news. The Gollum game has officially announced its delay after the fan backlash for the general appearance of the game. They'll be taking a, let's call it draft two, at trying to bring it up to par. And I've given this game a lot of crap over the last few months, and I've seen some people pushing back against that, saying, Daniel, this is a smaller studio, it's not a AAA title. What are you doing here? You're crapping on people who are doing their best. And I absolutely wanna make it clear, I think 
think you are crazy wrong and out of touch if that's your response to my coverage of this game's look because of two reasons. The first is that you are doing a massive disservice to the indie side of gaming. This isn't some person in their garage making the game. It is a studio and indie smaller studios within gaming have been pumping out exquisite looking games for a long time. And on top of that, it's called biting off more than you can chew. And that is absolutely something you can criticize from many different standpoints. They are trying to make an exploration type Middle Earth game that comes with a certain expectation of a large part of the appeal of the game being in its presentation and beauty. To then just say, eh, it doesn't look great, but it's fine because they're smaller. You're essentially saying that you're lowering the bar because of the artistic constraints when so many times we've seen artistic constraints, especially in and gaming actually bring forth some of the greatest games of all time. You can totally disagree with my philosophy and want to lower the bar for smaller studio stuff, but it's the same thing when I give just as harsh a review to an indie book as one that was traditionally published. But I will end this story by just saying I have a massive amount of respect for the studio not pulling a Cyberpunk 2077 and saying, look, you're right, this isn't up to par, it's not finished, we're gonna keep working at it. That is immediately going to get me more on the side of the people behind this game than I was before. But let's slip away from that slightly piece of contentious news and instead talk about some universally good news for the upcoming live action Avatar show that made me admittedly smile quite big. And it's that we are going to be getting the actor behind the Cabbage Merchant returning for the live action show to reprise his role. This confirms that the Cabbage Merchant will be in the live action show and with the original actor returning, that is just the type of fan service that I'm like, Okay, it's good fan service, damn it. In a terrible oversight, I just realized I said all this without saying the actor's name is James C, who's been in many other great projects like Kung Fu Panda and the Jackie Chan animated series. I'm still very hesitant on this live action Avatar show. The drama around it has been really interesting to follow over the last year, but there's been a few good headlines in a row that have me at least going, I'm excited to watch it, to see what all of this has been for. And uh, whether it's good or bad, it's been fun to talk about with the community. But speaking of fun to talk about, we had the trailer drop for Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio in stop motion animation. And I love this art form. I really like this director. And the end result was something that I was pausing very obnoxiously every couple of seconds to just take in the beauty of what was being done. I know stop motion isn't for everybody because they just can't get emerged into it. And while I kind of understand that, if you haven't given stop motion a try in a a while and you'd like to see what the best of the art form can bring to the table, I highly recommend you check out this trailer because it was simply beautiful. As someone who's a really big fan of behind the scenes stuff for movies and shows, watching the making of stop motion animation projects is always one of my favorites. I'll probably have just a good time watching the making of this Pinocchio movie as I do watching the actual movie. And in the final piece of trailer news we'll be covering here today, the Sandman trailer dropped. One of the series I've seen the most kind of back and forth on line about whether or not fans are excited or not for the series. And I know I often talk about how don't believe in trailers here, but it seems the Sandman trailer has won over the fan base of this story. Helping even more so, we also got a video drop where Neil Gaiman himself was going over the trailer and a lot of the decisions made behind the scenes and it looked really, really good. I couldn't help but thinking back to like, you know, the early 2000s when I grew up watching a lot of my favorite shows and how bad VFX looked in shows back then and you just had to accept it. Like, yeah, they're not gonna look good. You suspend your disbelief and move on. And then you look at the visuals in this Sandman trailer and wow. In terms of near releases, this might be the show I am most excited about. Oh, buddy. But before we finish off with a little bit of a deep dive and a piece of Star Wars news, quickly, I'd like to say that officially Everything Everywhere All at Once has crossed a $100 million in the box office and that is so awesome to see. So congratulations to everyone involved in that. Probably still my favorite movie of the year. But let's go ahead and talk about Star Wars. The upcoming remake of the 2003 Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic game is officially paused. And the reason I want to take a little bit more time to dive deeper into this is I'm seeing quite a few people online talk about it like the game has been canceled. No, there is no inclination that that has happened yet, just that a rather large delay has been put into effect with now no official continued release date, aside from a vague promise of 2025 being a realistic goal for this remake. And what happened behind 
behind the scenes seems to be that a trailer or demo of the game was shown to Lucasfilms and it probably didn't live up to expectations or there were other problems alongside with the production. I don't want to speculate too much because with huge projects like this, you never really know the full story unless you're in the team. But I want to just really reiterate, there has been no one saying the game is officially canceled altogether. In fact, as recently as May, a whole other studio, Saber Interactive, was brought in to help with development. I don't want to downplay the weight of this either. If you're really anticipating this game, I don't think it'll be out anytime soon, especially because we saw two directors involved with the project removed. So there's going to be, it seems, quite a bit of creative shakeup before the game is able to continue its progression for its release. This is probably one of the most important games from my childhood, so I'll absolutely be giving it a go whenever it is finally put out, if it is, on my Twitch stream. Fantasy News on Twitch. Go ahead and give me a follow. Thank you. But this has just been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already, and hit the Patreon if you'd like to support what I do here. I got books, I got merch, and have a great one, y'all. Peace.